Good morning. I would like to start by asking you a question, but I want you to respond in your heart. Have you ever felt guilty? In my life, I have felt guilty many times, but the one that fits with this lesson is the one that took place in my childhood in El Salvador. I was about seven or eight years old, and since my dad and my mom divorced, I was living with my dad. And since my dad had to work, he asked my godmother to take care of me. She was a big woman, very sweet when she was asleep. Let's put it this way, she had a bad temper. One day, as I was in her house playing with her son, we were playing with his little toy. He was about my age. And I think I got too excited with it because there was a collision. It was a little car, and I broke it. And her son began to cry like a girl. <laughs> and right away, my godmother showed up to see what I did to her son. Of course, her son accused me, and she got very upset with me. She said, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you have to fix it. And you can't do anything else until you fix it. So I grabbed this little card, and I began to try to fix it. There was no way to fix it. Two wheels have fallen off. And since it was a plastic car, there was no way to put them back. Super glue was not yet available in El Salvador. <laughs> so I felt guilty. And that incident took place around 9 AM. And by 6 PM, my godmother had me still working on it. That was her way of punishing me. And I was very frustrated with this little car, but I felt very guilty because I broke it and I couldn't fix it. And that's why guilt is so painful because we messed up and we can't make it right. When Judas betrayed the Lord, he realized that he had messed up. He felt guilty. He tried to make it right by returning the money, but he was unable to. When he found himself in the situation that he had messed up and couldn't make it right, he must have felt extremely guilty because the way he sought to get rid of his guilt was to commit suicide. Judas chose a wrong method to deal with guilt. As humans, when we find ourselves feeling guilty of something, we try to find ways to get rid of it. And we usually choose the wrong methods. Today, we're going to talk about dealing with guilt. First of all, we need to understand it. The old English word is... Uh, G-Y-L-T, and it means sin, offense, it means fine. Um, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, there is no specific word for guilt. But there are some Bible passages like Psalm 25, verse 11, where it says, for your name's sake, O oh Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. The word translated as guilt in Hebrew is avon, and it means iniquity, moral evil, or sin. There are other words, for example, like asham, clearly expresses idea related to guilt. However, its use is mainly 
in matters of ritual law, according to Leviticus 5.17. Also in Matthew chapter 27, verse 3 and 4, according to the New American Standard Bible, says, Then when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse, and he returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. The words remorse and sin in Greek, they are totally different words, but both communicate in this context the presence of guilt. There are other words, for example, in James chapter 2, verse 10. For whoever keeps the, the, law, the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. In this verse, the word translated as guilt comes from the Greek word enochos, basically means to be responsible or liable to. Guilt is that state of a person after the intentional or unintentional violation of the law of the land or the law of God. This is called objective guilt because it is based on facts. But also guilt is an emotional state in which one experiences conflict at having done something that violates his own moral beliefs. This is called subjective guilt because it is based on feelings. Subjective guilt is not a trustworthy way to decide if we are guilty of something. The feelings of guilt are not a reliable source. It is dangerous for us to rely totally on our feelings in order to know if we are guilty or not. The reason is our heart is messed up because of sin. And our heart is deceptive, according to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. It is possible to have objective guilt without having subjective guilt. You can be guilty of doing something wrong without feeling any sense of remorse of guilt. We have heard stories of people who have committed horrific crimes, but show no signs of remorse, even though they are actually guilty. They turned off their conscience. You can also feel subjective guilt without having objective guilt. People who have been sexually assaulted often feel guilty because of what happened to them, even though they were the victim. In these cases, they feel guilty, but they are actually not guilty. Guilty feelings are necessary. The feelings of guilt do have value. They serve as an internal alarm system that alerts us that we have violated our own conscience or moral beliefs. They moved us to a positive uh, behavior. The feelings of guilt are painful emotions. Guilty feelings have a number of painful emotions, usually includes anxiety in anticipation of punishment, shame with a sense of humiliation, dirtiness and grief, and depression for the lack of self-worth and dignity. Since guilt brings intense emotional pain, people choose several different methods of escaping or killing the pain of guilty of, the, of a guilty conscience. Most of these methods bring further injury to the person. That's why people try to find their own ways to deal with guilt. Now we're gonna talk about dealing with your own guilt. And basically, I mean human ways to deal with it. The truth is that mankind avoids dealing with guilt properly. It is too shameful. Being in a dishonorable situation is not pleasant. 
It's too humiliating. We are too proud to admit our own mistakes and don't like to be humiliated. It is too expensive. We don't like to pay the price for our actions. Most of the time, our ways of dealing with guilt are actually efforts to get rid of it. And we usually, we start blaming others. It is an attempt to transfer guilt from yourself to someone else. This is the most common and quick response of the children of Adam and Eve. Let me share with you another story. We recently purchased a new car, a Volkswagen Jetta. When we got to the auto dealer, we saw a sign that says, Beta Geta Jetta. That's what we did. <laughs> a few weeks later, we went to Amarillo to spend time with relatives. And we took the Jetta. While we were in Amarillo, my family and I stopped by a car wash. It was one of those coin car washes. We washed it and we were ready to take off. So we got into the car and I saw in the back there was a, an exit, but it was filled with dirty water. And I didn't want to get the car dirty again. So as I was looking for another exit, I saw there was one in front of me. And as I approached it, I noticed that that was not an exit. So as I was looking for another exit, my wife might have said, there is the exit. It was the exit filled with dirty water. And I said, okay. So in order to go through that exit, I had to back up a little bit. And as I was going in reverse, suddenly we heard, boom. I had hit a metal post. I felt embarrassed. And I went through the exit filled with dirty water. As I was leaving, I began to blame myself. How in the world did I do that? And I think I said it two or three times. Finally, Ashley said, Dad, don't blame yourself. Accidents happen. And I said, you're right. I should have blamed your mother. <laughs> And Myra looked at me and said, yeah, right, Adam. <laughs> of course, I was joking. But as humans, is that not what we do? We blame others for our own mistakes. We try to transfer guilt from ourselves to someone else. And we were, when we are doing that, we're trying to get rid of our guilt, and you're never going to get rid of it. We also covered it up, or tried to. This is another way to get rid of guilt. What did Moses do after he killed the Egyptian in Exodus 2? He buried the body. That was not a funeral. It was a cover-up. The Hebrew, word, the Hebrew word actually communicates that Moses hid the body. We also flee and hide. What do children do when they get into a mischief? They run and hide. What do criminals do when they rob a bank? They flee and hide. What did Moses do after killing the Egyptian and his crime was known? He fled and hid in Midian. We also deny it. In Genesis chapter 18, what did Sarah say when the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? She said, I didn't. But the Lord told her, yes, you did. 
As a result, she had to name her boy Laughter for Isaac, which is the, the, what appears in the Bible. We also justify. Yes, I did it, but I had to do it. We find ways to self-justification. Let's put an example. Let's say on a Sunday morning, a Sunset employee is driving on 34th Street at 65 miles per hour. And a police officer stops him by, for speeding. And he says to the police officer, Sir, I know I was speeding a little bit, but I was going to Sunset Church of Christ, and I was trying to make it on time. Would that work? Well, according to David Henniger, it doesn't work. <laughs> make it look like a small thing. That's what we do, too. We make it look like a small thing. Have you heard things like, did I hurt you? Man, I just barely touched you. We also self-medicate it. Many people try to get rid of their guilt by using legal drugs or illegal drugs or alcohol. That's another way to try to escape a guilty conscience. And lastly, some commit suicide. Like Judas, for example. When people experience great guilt, they often feel that they don't want to live anymore. And some commit suicide thinking that death will end their guilt, but doesn't work. It's just another big mistake. What works is facing your own guilt. Acknowledge your sin, your offense, your fault. Not with an attitude of arrogance, like saying, yes, I did it, so what? It must be with an attitude of Humility, knowing that we messed up. It must be with a sense that we have something, that we have done something wrong. And then feel sorry about it. It is okay to feel bad about it. Especially when you are objectively guilty. For example, David, the man after God's own heart. He felt sorrow over sin. Psalm 38 Psalm 51, you can tell he mourned his sin. This is a sense of sorrow or regret. It can be a time to cry a little bit. To weep is a way to release guilt. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, it says, Godly sorrow produces repentance. In order to be able to repent, we must first experience a sense of sadness over our own sin, and then repent. To repent in a religious sense is a complete change of direction, 180 degrees turn toward God. It involves a commitment to personal change for the better. It, is, it is also involves the determination to, to stop doing what is wrong, and beginning to do what is right. To repent is a transformative change of heart which leads to change the way you live, the way you think, and the way you act. And then confess. Confession means to say the same thing. You need to say the same thing that God says about your sins. Confession is another way to release guilt. Many people who have committed a crime say that when they confessed, they experienced release. It is like they have been carrying a large burden and they have unloaded it when they confessed. And then, lastly, Trust. There are people who have made all the right steps to face their guilt, 
but continue feeling guilty. They can't forgive themselves. They can't let it go. They condemn themselves. And you don't have the right to condemn anybody. And that includes yourself. The blood of Christ is greater than our sins and guilt. God is greater than, the, than our own heart, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. If you feel guilty, remember, our God is greater, and he knows all things. He knows, he knows you better than you know your own heart. He knows the price has been paid. He knows there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He knows you have been forgiven. So stop. Stop trusting in your guilty feelings and begin to trust in God and in his word. So what? Got guilt? Take your time understanding your own guilt. Don't let your feelings deceive you. Don't deal with your guilt with traditional human methods. It doesn't work. Take courage to face your guilt relying on the grace of God. He has paid the price. Coming back to my introduction, since I was not able to fix the car, my godmother told me that he went, she was going to talk with my father. And I knew that meant trouble for me. When my dad came home, I began to cry like a man. <laughs> and I said to him, Dad, I broke it and I can't fix it. And he asked, what did you break? And I showed to him the little car. And he said, son, that's okay. No worries. I will take care of it. He went to talk with my godmother. And he basically paid her the car. That was the end of my guilt. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, they messed up and could not make it right. Since then, mankind is dealing with the guilt of sin. And by human efforts, we can't make it right. Therefore, God had to make it right. By, praying the, by paying the price for sin with the, precious, with the precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, we can be free from the guilt of sin. I started this lesson by asking you, have you ever felt guilty? I know the answer. The answer is yes. Now let me ask you another question. How are you dealing with your guilt? <laughs>